Hey guys, welcome into another episode of the Wolverine Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, EJ Holland. Alongside me is my co-host, Zach Libby. I am back uh, from the farm. Sorry for canceling our Wednesday show. And yes, the farm animals did survive. None of them died. And I am still alive, even though I ended up with the stomach flu. Um, but I'm powering through here for you guys. And so is Zach. And we're here to talk new rankings now, On3 did not update its own rankings for the 2024 recruiting class, but they did a couple of months ago, and uh, 24-7 recently updated theirs, I want to say, last week. So there were some changes on the industry ranking. Now, remember, On3's industry ranking tool uh, calculates the four major recruiting services, so Rivals, ESPN, 24-7, and On3, of course, and spits out an average it, weighs on three and 24 sevens rankings a little more heavily than it does ESPN and rivals, but still factors in all four sites. Now there was significant movement for quite a few Michigan recruits. Let's start off with some positive movement. And uh, yes, by the way, guys, I saw John getting some uh, questions in here. Remember tomorrow is the Q and a show. I will be back tomorrow. Uh, to answer all of your questions. But if you do want to get a question in tonight, you can hit that super chat button. That money goes directly to our travel budget. But let's talk about arguably the biggest riser in the latest industry update. And that is Michigan cornerback commit Josiah Edmond out of Indiana. Zach, you had a chance to go out and see Edmond uh, play live a few weeks ago. Uh, now up to the number 311 overall recruit nationally. He's still a three-star on three of the four major recruiting services, but now a four-star on 24-7. Um, Zach, just thoughts on uh, Edmund moving up more than 300 spots in this update. Yeah, I kind of thought it was huge that we got out there to see him live in September before he got a rankings bump by any service. I mean, when we – after we saw him, which was like the second week of September – he was in the top 800s for the on three industry ranking. And now he's in the top 400s, which I think that's where we both thought he would end up at some point. I think this soon, I think it, people are just starting to notice his productivity on both sides of the ball and just um, his versatility and really his Swiss army knife abilities. Like I know Michigan is bringing him as a cornerback, but for his high school, he, he starts at running back. He starts at receiver. He plays nickel. He plays deep safety, box safety, kick returner, uh, punt returner. He's also the punter for his team um, that is seven and two right now in the season. So, I mean, going back to Swiss Army, my, he is proficient in any, any spot that he get, wants to play. I mean, on three, director of scouting and recruiting, Charles Power has told us that Josiah could be a wide out if he wanted to. Right. He's got he's a good round runner and has good hands. But on defense, I think Link saw a kid um, when he committed in August that was aggressive in the run game. Um, you know, when we saw him, he had a couple sacks. He had a couple TFLs um, in pass coverage. He doesn't allow separation with the route runner. I mean, he's he has that mentality that kind of fits what Clink scale is looking for in his position group. Right. It kind of reminds me of DJ Waller in that way. Um Physically, both are lanky. They both have long arms. Um, Josiah is a little bit less, weighs a little bit less than Waller at this point of this stage. But, you know, they both have that mean streak, that fire and that physicality. And, you know, obviously that's brought DJ Waller plenty of playing time through these first seven games. And it wouldn't be surprised to see someone like Josiah, who's enrolling early to do the same. So I think he's more than deserving for that huge of a rankings bump. And I think people are just now starting to see what his talents can bring for a team like Michigan. Oops, it looks like I was on mute for some reason. Uh, I'm so sorry about that, guys. Thanks, Zach, for not saying anything. But um, no, I do agree on the uh, Josiah Edmond uh, ranking. 
you know, this is a guy who uh, I said was very much in the same mold as Jair Hill. When you watch Jair Hill as a recruit, he was a guy that played all over the field as well. Everything in the secondary, wide receiver, running back. And like Edmund, he was also the team's punter. Um, also like Hill, Edmund is six foot one, 180 pounds. So a little bit of a tall, long corner, kind of the same thing with Jair. Now, I did have Jair ranked higher than I do Edmund, but I do think he's a similar type of prospect. So I believe this rankings bump uh, was definitely warranted. I think you'll see more of the recruiting services when they do their most recent update also follow suit. The 150 is a little high. I have him ranked in the 200 to 250 range, but either way, I think he's a top 300 prospect. Um, and like I said, I think the other three services will catch up once they, uh, you know, once they update their rankings here and look over mid-season film. Something that John pointed out in the chat is Bryce West is 143 and Josiah Edmond is 151. Now, Zach, I told you a few months ago, I, I quietly whispered to you and said, I think Bryce West is overrated. Uh, and you told me that you did not agree. Now, do you think that there's really an eight spot difference between Ohio State commit Bryce West and Michigan commit Josiah Ed? Because you saw Bryce West way more than I did. I think they're two completely different players. I mean, Josiah is an athlete that's going to play cornerback. I think Bryce West is a pure cornerback. Um, Josiah has a few more inches on him. Bryce West has more muscle mass. Um, I think they both play aggressive. Um, they're both dogs, right? But I, I think they're just two completely different players. I think it's hard to – I think it's hard to compare and contrast the two. They're, they're just two different players in terms of how they play on the football field. Yeah, I would say Bryce is a little more polished as a pure corner for sure. Josiah Edmond, when you're looking at his ranking, you're looking at his ceiling. And I think Edmond has the ability to be better than Bryce West, but Bryce West is the better prospect right now. Uh, while I do think Bryce West is a little overrated by all the services I do think that uh, he's probably the better recruit right now. But when you're looking at a guy that has the upside that Edmund does, that could pan out to be a really, really good land for Michigan. Now, if you were comparing uh, both of them to Aaron Scott, I would take Aaron Scott all day. But I think when you're looking at Edmund and West, I, I could see your argument if you wanted to go for a more high ceiling prospect. Let's go ahead and go to Michigan's newest top 100 recruit. So, yes, Michigan has a new top 100 recruit in the industry rankings, and that is offensive tackle Andrew Sprague out of Kansas City Rockers. Zach, you were just in Kansas City seeing Sprague. I've been high on Sprague since we did that recruiting draft, and I, you know, smartly took him, um, you know, while Zach drafted some other nonsensical players like Jordan Seaton. I was always on the Andrew Sprague train. Zach, you were very high on him after seeing him live. How excited are you about Sprague getting a bump on 24-7 and thus propelling him into the top 100 on the on three industry rankings? Yeah, I think the industry ranking has it right. Like, I think, I mean, I said I was, he was a top 10 tackle in the country, but with him being number five, I mean, that um, – propelled my expectations of where he could reach um yeah six foot eight 290 pounds uh, when i saw him last like you mentioned last week he he pr pretty much was the most polished offensive lineman that i have seen on the road like i really think he could be the starting left tackle for michigan in the future and i think i felt the same way about someone like evan link and i always compared the two because they're kind of the same in regards to overall intelligence and proficiency with their overall technique um you know for a kid who's at like i said 6'8 290 pounds um which he told me on when i visited he's he moves well for such a big guy i mean he's very athletic he bends at the hips he fires off can get to that second level um he's trusted with pulling he's a wall in pass protection and he finishes his blocks i mean 
I wouldn't say he's as mean and as a bully as Blake Frazier was when you saw him, but I, I don't know who else, who is, but you know, if you want to play on Sharon Moore's offensive line, you know, you have to play that smash mouth football. And that's what Andrew Sprague brings to the table. I mean, I think that's what, that, I think that's what his expectations should be for himself, and that's what Michigan fans should expect for him. Like, that's going to be your starting left tackle once he gets through the system, gets through his strength and conditioning program, and learns more under Coach Moore. Yeah, I, um, you know, the reason I've been high on Sprague since way back when was just the size. You see that six foot eight, 295 pounds, and that pops out right away. That's something that Sharon Moore can easily work with. But then you also see the way he moves at his size. A, a lot of his junior films showed him getting to the next level, picking up backers or moving in space and picking up blocks on screen passes or, you know, short passes. So he was a guy that always seemed to move really, really well um, with that frame. And I think he's a guy that can add another, you know, 20, 30 pounds and still be just as athletic. I think Ben Herbert does a fantastic job of making sure offensive linemen keep their athleticism while adding the necessary weight and strength to excel at the next level. So I've had Sprague hovering around the top 100. It's interesting you mentioned Link. So I had I was higher on Link than pretty much everybody, and I had Link graded around the top 125 area. I'm higher on Sprague. So I would say, you know, the industry ranking pretty much does have it right, kind of back end of the top 100. Uh, I didn't realize he was the number five tackle now. That's a big bump. It looks like, um, you know, it's a bit of a weaker year for the tackle position. Normally you'd see more guys in that top 100. Um, but really cool to see him in that top five from a tackle perspective. But yeah, I think Sprague's one of the best commits in the class. I think he's been, you know, a guy that's been easy to identify since since the beginning so he's uh you know a great land for michigan and you know one of the headliners for sure um let's go ahead with one more rankings bump i've asked you zach about two guys that uh that you've seen recently well i'm going to talk about one guy i've seen recently and that is devin baxter who i'm seeing again this weekend i'm excited because the first time i saw devin baxter they played this team that ran like the wishbone so I couldn't see him get after the passer this weekend. I'm hoping the team they play against passes the ball a little bit more. Um, but I did see him a few weeks ago in that um, lightning delay weekend that we had across the DMV. But uh, Baxter has moved up now Two services have him ranked in the top 225. So on three as in the highest at 203. 24 seven as him at 224. And I would expect him to move up on ESPN and rivals his rankings once they, um, you know, do their update as well. Uh, but yeah, like, uh, John A. Schultz pointed out, everybody is getting on board with your Devin Baxter train. Yes, I have been on the, you guys don't know how many times I wrote about Devin Baxter before he committed with nobody caring. <laughs> I was all aboard the Devin Baxter train since the very beginning, and it's awesome to see him move up. He's had a really good uh, senior season. I think you're seeing him become a little bit more polished as a pure edge guy. When you initially took a look at his junior film, he was a guy that could pin his ears back and get after the quarterback, played a lot of receiver, played some quarterback as well, but was a really unrefined athlete. And I think now he's becoming more of a guy that is, you know, gaining steam from a technical standpoint. He's getting better with his bend. He's added some good weight to his frame. So he's just starting to, you know, reach some of that potential that I saw in him as a junior, that the Michigan staff saw in him as a junior. I mean, Michigan deserves uh, the most credit for this. I wouldn't have known who Devin Baxter was had they not started to recruit him. So I think Dylan Roney did a fantastic job of evaluating Baxter and making him a top priority. Remember when Michigan first offered Baxter early in the off season, they still had a number of highly touted edge targets on the board and they made Baxter a priority from day one as well. So, you know, they saw the upside. I saw the upside. It's great to see the services uh, seeing the upside as well. I think Devin Baxter 
is probably a guy that's going to come into Michigan and is going to need to sit for a little while. I think he's going to still need to develop from a technical standpoint under Mike Elston. I still think he's going to have to hit the strength and conditioning program under Ben Herbert. But, and you might not hear from him for two years, but I think he has a David Ajabo like ceiling. And I'm not saying, I'm not taking that lightly. I really do think he can be David Ajabo as at Michigan after a couple of years within the program. So just wanted to touch on Devin Baxter moving up as well. Now, there were a couple of uh, drops. Zach, most notably, Jaden Davis has suffered another big drop. Well, not a big, big drop. Um, but he did move out of the top 100 on 24 seven. And that means that three of the four major recruiting services have now dropped Jaden Davis out of the top 100, the lone remaining service that has Davis ranked inside the top 100 is rivals. And because rivals still has him ranked as the number 35 overall recruit nationally, he is still in the top 100 in the industry ranking. And it'll be interesting to see if he finishes there by the end of the cycle. Now, everybody knows my thoughts on Jaden Davis, and I'll share them again. Um, but Zach, I think some people are actually curious, you know, to, to hear what you have to say. I know you haven't seen Davis as much as I have um, lately, but, you know, what do you make of the services starting to drop Davis out of the top 100? I think... I don't I don't want to like say what you're gonna say, but it's kind of my same opinion, right? Like I feel like there still needs more development. Um, I think he's showing in his senior film what he can find success with at Michigan, right? He's a leader on the field. He can command an offense. He's <laughs> near perfect in short to intermediate passes. Um, I still still would like to see him be more mobile. I would still like to see him be more consistent with the deep throw. Um, but I think those are just things that once he gets to Michigan, we'll get fine tuned. You know, I, I, I've only seen him once in a practice, so I don't have as much of an, you know, I don't have as much experience seeing you, seeing him in person as you have, but I think, I think the obvious, it, you know, you can watch film from it. You know, like I said, there's still things that he needs to groove on. I think there's some things that need to be developed, but I think the things that make would will make him or could potentially make him a multi-year starting quarterback in Michigan is like what I just said, right? He is, he has intelligence. He has good eye on field IQ. He can lead an offense down the field. He's very patient with this row. So we'll see what happens, but yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't really have an argument with him dropping out of the top 100. Yeah. And I mean, I've said he was a, wasn't a top 100 prospect dating to last November. And I think once things picked up with, you know, his uh, dad going on a radio show and not being happy with me kind of picked up, I think a lot of people thought I was just being biased and saying that Davis wasn't a top 100 player. This is an opinion I've had for basically an entire year now. We're almost November of 2023 so this was last year when i saw him in game for the third time that i really dropped my ranking now i will say this when i first saw Jaden davis live as a sophomore i did think he was in five-star contention you could see all the tools and you could see the room for development and you were like okay this guy you know he grows a couple inches he adds more athleticism he already has all the tools you want he improves the deep ball you have yourself a five-star caliber quarterback and it just didn't pan out that way i think davis has been on the recruiting radar for so long literally since he was a middle schooler and he just hasn't progressed as many expected he didn't get taller he's still six foot he didn't get more mobile. He's actually he actually looks less mobile this year than he did last year. And when you're a sub six one quarterback and you're not mobile, it's really hard to excel. You know, you can bring up guys like like Kyler Murray, but he's one of the greatest rushing quarterbacks I've ever seen. Or you can bring up guys like Bryce Young, who doesn't run a ton or didn't run a ton in college, but rushed for more than a thousand yards in high school and is a Houdini in and outside of the pocket. Uh, Jaden Davis isn't really a creator. He's a distributor. And it's hard to rank a distributor as a five-star level guy. Now, when you look at Davis's senior film, he's definitely perfected what he's already good at. So a lot of people are saying, well, Davis is putting up a lot of stats. Why isn't he moving up? 
because it's not about the stats. It's about projection to college, which I've said many times. But but what you look at is, OK, this guy has perfected the short to intermediate accuracy. He is terrific at running a controlled offense. His mental processing is elite. So, you know, while he might not be a five star guy because he's a short, you know, quarterback that can't really run and has an inconsistent deep ball and doesn't have the elite arm strength to make up for that, like a Bryce Underwood, right? Um, that doesn't mean he's a bad prospect. We're here sitting and arguing whether he's a five star or a top 200 guy. You know, Michigan doesn't need a five star at the quarterback position to win at a high level. They need a guy that can be a distributor, right? And Jaden Davis is that. He's not a guy that's going to make very many mistakes. He go, Going into this weekend, he had only thrown one interception. He threw three against Charlotte Christian, uh, which was uncharacteristic of him. But for the most part, he protects the football. He hits the open guy. He's great at running the controlled offense. Um, you know, he, and he's well tailor-made for the uh, Michigan offense. So I think overall – when you look at it, you know, Davis has the tools you want to excel in Michigan's offense. I think he can have plenty of success at Michigan. I think he's a really good quarterback. But when you're talking about five-star level guys, you're talking about the elite of the elite. And I just don't think Davis is in that category. Again, it's hard to rank short quarterbacks that can't run and create in that five-star level range. But being in that top 200 range isn't a knock on Davis. He's a guy that, again, can be very successful at Michigan. And that's all Michigan fans should really care about, right? Um, you know, so we hit on the guys that rose. We hit on Davis's drop. Uh, we're running low on time. We've gone past time in this first segment. We can talk rankings all day. Uh, Zach, give me one more takeaway uh, from the latest industry rankings update, you know, whether it was a riser or a guy that dropped or just anything in general what was your biggest takeaway from this latest update, aside from the things we talked about. That Cole Sullivan, uh, the on 300 linebacker for on three out of Pittsburgh, Central Catholic didn't move at all by 247. I don't know what they're seeing, but I think we both see a kid who could be a top 100 player, and we have both said he could arguably be the best defensive prospect in this, in this class from Michigan. High ceiling, high floor, everything that you want out of a character and of a player. Um, I, 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 he was one that I expected to have a, a significant rise, but he didn't get anything. Yeah, I um, am a big Cole Sullivan fan as well, so I will present a similar case for Owen Wafel. Um, you know, everybody wants to talk NFL measurables and all of this, but when you're looking at a really, a guy that can be a really, really good college player and make an early impact, Owen Wafel is that guy. And, you know, I, <laughs> I think that's the same case for literally Jaden Davis. Like I think Jaden Davis can be a really good college player and, you know, make an early impact as well. Um, I'm not arguing that Wafel should be a five-star guy, uh, just like I wouldn't make the argument for Davis to be a five-star guy. But I think, uh, you know, services are really missing the boat on him not being ranked inside the top 300. Uh, you know, on three has him as a three-star, 24-7 has him as a three-star. The other two have him as a low four-star. I think Wafel is a clear top 300 guy. He's extremely powerful in the trenches, just does a terrific job of living in opponent's backfields. He's very similar to Mason Graham, who it kind of took forever for Mason Graham to get a bump in the rankings. It wasn't until really, really late in the cycle that people started to get on board with Mason Graham. And I was, of course, very vocal for a Mason Graham rise, and I am very vocal for an Owen Wayful rise as well. I think I'm the only guy on the Michigan beat that has seen Owen Wafel and I've seen him many times. Um, and I, I just, I, when I see him, I see Mason Graham. And I think he's a guy that is also deserving of a rankings bump. All right, guys, before we move on to our thoughts from the road, I do want to bring you a message from tonight's sponsor. Lewis Jewelers has been serving the Ann Arbor and Detroit region since 1921. 
Lewis Jewelers' reputation and continued success stems from our belief that a successful jewelry store is built on integrity, quality customer service, and quality products. Lewis Jewelers are a proud partner of Michigan Athletics. To ensure every client that walks through their doors or peruses our virtual store is taken care of, they have a non-commissioned trusted advisor team that's always ready to provide professional experience, advice, and expertise. Uh, no pressure, no commission. Located in the bustling city limits of Ann Arbor, Michigan, Lewis Jewelers proudly serves the Ann Arbor and surrounding southeastern Michigan communities by providing an exquisite selection of fine jewelry, as well as excellent customer service to its residents and visitors. Visit them at their new location, 300 South Maple Road, Ann Arbor, or online at lewisjewelers.com. If you're looking for a great Halloween gift, jewelry is always the perfect gift. You want to show up to your Halloween party and make a big impression? Go to Lewis Jewelers and get some jewelry and give the gift of giving at your Halloween parties. All right, let's go ahead and talk about our time on the road. We are running short on time, so let's go ahead and breeze through our time seeing guys. Um, just a quick reminder, if you haven't uh hit that super chat button you still can you can get your question in tonight and that money goes directly to our travel budget so we can continue seeing guys on the road i'll start it off zach i'll start off with blake frazier since i'm the i was the only one that saw a commit right you saw a pair of underclassmen all right so i'm the only one that saw a commit this weekend and i had a chance to go down to austin texas to see michigan offensive tackle commit Blake Frazier. I just uploaded his highlights onto YouTube. So if you're not a subscriber to our YouTube channel for free, hit that subscribe button and go watch the video. Um, but I think a lot of you guys saw a couple of the uh, social media posts that I made on Frazier. And I mean, he was an absolute bully all night long in Vandegrist blowout went over Round Rock. I mean, he served up several pancakes. He was terrific in pass pro. And I think Frazier just checked the boxes again for me. I've always been really high on Frazier. You see three of the services have him, ranked outside, have him ranked outside of the top 200. I have him ranked inside the top 200. Um, at six foot five, 270, he's a really athletic kid that has the room to add 30, 40 more pounds. And like I said earlier with Sprague, Ben Herbert does a fantastic job of making sure guys keep their athleticism while adding the necessary strength and uh, weight at the next level. I think after a couple of years in the program, Frazier will be a guy that starts along the offensive line. I also like his position flexibility. I think you can throw him in at guard first and let him work his way out to tackle later on in his career. But um, yeah, overall, I mean, Frazier is technically sound. He's mean. He finishes blocks. He's pretty much everything you want in an offensive lineman. I mean, I, I really love Frazier, and I think he kind of gets lost in the sauce a bit because he's a legacy recruit. His dad, Steve, played for the Wolverines, but he's not just a legacy recruit. I mean, this is a guy that had offers from basically every major program across the country. Uh, there's a lot to love about Blake Frazier, and I think one of the most important aspects of Frazier as well is he knows what it takes to be a Michigan man because he's been around the program for a lot of his life. And he's a culture builder. I mean, he's a captain for his team. His teammates love and respect him. And you can just tell the dude uh, has fun playing football. So it was uh, definitely a joy to watch Blake Frazier on Thursday night. I really like uh, what he brings to the table. I like what Sprague brings to the table. I think those are your future tackles at Michigan right there. Now, we also had a chance to see several underclassmen on the road as well. I'll kick it over to Zach so he can uh, tell you a little bit about two in enemy territory. Yeah. So first guy, Carter Lowe on 300 offensive tackle from Toledo Whitmer. This was the first time that we have seen him live in a game um we've been to his practices we've been to his school but this was the first time you've seen him in game action um you know after talking to many people you know sources people with familiarity strong familiarity with low you know he kind of he has the early repertoire to be one of the most dominating offensive tackles in college football and he has arguably the highest ceiling of any 2025 offensive lineman um he's six foot six 310 pounds right now. I know that's not what it says on his on three profile, but that's the current frame he's at right now. He's only played organized football for two full seasons. So this year is his third. 
Um, he continues to show improvement and has, eva- you know, has elevated his game through his ability to dissect information, be coachable, and just the willingness to learn. Like he's a very, very smart kid. Um, you know, you could see the improvement from just how many camps he attended this off season, like at Michigan, where he received one-on-one training with offensive line coach Jerome Moore multiple times this, this past summer. But, you know, I kind of left that game on Friday, really impressed with his pass blocking. You know, you can tell that those off season camps are paying off, you know, for a kid, his size, um, you know, that kind of mirrors Andrew Sprague in a way, you know, low in his stance, proper kick step, um, grid motion with it, you know, understands hand placement in the pass pro and just locks on. I mean, he's a strong dude. I mean, he has one of the most powerful punches, like initial punches that I have seen from a kid off the line of scrimmage. Um, in the run game, you know, kind of as I mentioned in my article on Monday, talking about observations, there were a couple of things that are going to be continued to be nurtured over time as he, you know, continues with the sport. Um, like I said, only two full years of experience. So kind of things like pulling, getting to the second level, you know, they're going to be worked on, but he's very aggressive. You know, he collected a number of pancake rocks, you know, and kind of mirrored what he put on film last season was just a kid who just wanted to hit people. Um, with Michigan, you know, eight visits uh, so far, including this past Saturday uh, for the Indiana win, you know, Lowe has been to Michigan the most out of any other school in his offer sheet. Um, that's even with Ohio state who he's been to seven times, um, Penn state, Alabama, Georgia, and others, you know, are putting a lot of focus on low, but you know, this is kind of slowly turning into another Michigan, Ohio state battle. If it hasn't already, I mean, he lives smack dab in the middle of a city. That's, you know, a good mixture of both Michigan and Ohio state fans. Um, he's never, he didn't really kind of grow up watching the sport, right? Like he grew up on basketball, so doesn't really have fandom for each school. So, that won't really play a factor, but a big factor will be strong relationships. Now, Cheryl Moore offered Carter Lowe in January, and he has gone out of his way to make Lowe and his family a priority. Like, we talked to Lowe's mother earlier this week, and she said the same thing. Like, Cheryl Moore has opened, has, has an open door policy where any questions that they may have, any concerns or any inquiries, Moore will answer the phone. And I think that's making a big impact so far. I mean, plus all the resources that are available for the football players, education is going to be big. Having Allowing Carter to have a family, and you can see that culture with the offensive line. So, you know, obviously Ohio State's doing the same thing with Justin Fry, offensive line coach, and head coach Ryan Day. They were just out of school for their bye week. So, you know, I, I, will, I think we're going to continue with this narrative as the months progress, as Lowe is going to return to – the big house for November for that Ohio state game. And he will be at Columbus this upcoming Saturday for the Penn state game, which is his third ever third game day visit at the shoe this season. So it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be fun to watch for both fan bases. And then the last one that I saw was right four star Finley, Ohio quarterback, Ryan Montgomery. Um, you know, Montgomery has been a guy that we talked about for quite some time for many years. I know you've seen him since he was in eighth grade. I have seen him ever since I have been on this beat, but you know, I think this was, this is also the first time that I have seen Montgomery play in a game. Um, you know, these first nine weeks of the season, you know, he's, had a very productive campaign. You know, it's sort of like a renaissance of sorts. You know, he's changed his person, he's changed his demeanor, he's changed his moxie. You know, you see a different side of him. You know, he's pacing, breaking passing records. Um, he said that no one prepares better than him for games. And you kind of see that on the field when he beat Whitmer 41 to 14. Um, you know, proved a velocity, improved accuracy, how he reads defenses. He makes plays out of pocket. He's showing more mobility for his six foot three, two hundred pound, ten pound frame. He delivers balls in a timely manner, and it's just tough. You know, he all three of his rushing touchdowns came from the one yard line. In total, he did have three hundred forty seven passing yards and was credited with all six touchdowns. You know, three of them were passing as well. But uh, you know, with his recruitment, it's going to be interesting with Michigan because we all know that. Bryce Underwood is a top target. You know, the five star of Belleville, regardless of position, next cycle. Kirk Campbell, Michigan quarterbacks coach, has done a great job of building relationships in the offseason with multiple quarterbacks, including Montgomery in the 25 class, and brought in just as many as for visits. Um, Montgomery visited three times 
while Campbell's on staff, including the barbecue at the big house in late July, you know, Montgomery was said there was honest conversations in those meetings during the barbecue. Um, you know, they did have weekly talks in the off season. So they, they, they have been able to get to know each other pretty well. Um, he hasn't visited yet for a game, um, but that could happen for the Ohio state game in late November. Um, Montgomery also mentioned, you know, he's been watching the Michigan offense and uh, JJ McCarthy. Uh, he's called him a Heisman trophy candidate about balanced offense that Michigan has been showing has been something that Montgomery likes as well. Um, you know, there's other schools in contention, obviously SEC, like South Carolina, Auburn, Penn, uh, Florida, Georgia, Penn state's another one, but you know, he did say schools are separating themselves because, you know, of, relationships and the interest that they have shown as he draws near a decision this upcoming off season. But, you know, with Michigan, we'll see what transpires this next couple of weeks. If he does indeed go to the Ohio state game, but in the scenario that Underwood does not elect to go to Ann Arbor and play for the Wolverines, I think you and I are both in agreement that someone like Montgomery and the improvement that he has shown, I think he would be a viable land as a number two option for Michigan. Definitely. So uh, before I wrap it up here, guys, just a reminder that we have a special over on the Wolverine.com. It's Michigan, Michigan State Week, and you can get 50% off your first year. This is for new subscribers only. But if you're not a subscriber to the Wolverine.com, you can sign up right now this week, only 50% off for your first year at the Wolverine.com. You get insider recruiting information, team information, and so much more. Plus, you get to be part of a great message board community um, over at the Wolverine.com. Um, I guess before we wrap it up, there is a follow-up um, to last week's question that we answered because it was non-football related. And Zach, you gave the weirdest answer ever and said that you believe in friendly ghosts, but not evil spirits. So do yeah. you believe in aliens is the follow-up answer or a follow-up question. I'm sorry. I just want to like clarify on my friendly ghost statement. Like if you're going to die, you don't just haunt people. You just kind of die. Like you just hang out and be a ghost. Like you don't have to like, haunt people when you die. But um, so you're scolding ghosts that do haunt people. Is basically you're a cruise you're on a crusade to stop ghosts ghost. from haunting people yeah me and bill murray are going to stop the ghosts with our ghostbuster van um you know okay aliens i'm gonna do like a normal answer you know the universe is so big infinite it's very large um i think there is life out there it just hasn't come here and we probably won't know because we'll be far gone when we'll be ghosts when aliens landed on land on this earth so I don't know. Okay, I'm going to try to get a better answer out of Zach. What do you think they look like? <sighs> the first thought is that Independence Day movie with Will Smith, like just the mean aliens. Um, I don't know. I think like that one movie, it was based in South Africa, right? Like they're just aliens and people like make them as they're like slaves. Like what's that movie called? It's... Uh, District Nine, thank you. Um, yeah, District, District Nine. Nine. Yeah, that's what I feel like aliens are. They're just people in alien form. I don't know, with better technology. <laughs> does Livy only believe in friendly <laughs> aliens? So are they friendly or are they here to take over? I don't think aliens would take over. I think they would just... They would be friendly then. I, I'm Sure, yeah, they would be our... They would be our space allies against other aliens i don't know i don't know <laughs> i will just say that i do believe in aliens great follow-up question like zach said the universe is so big it has to be aliens right like you know uh, i don't believe they look like the fake alien that was presented in mexico the other day but uh, but i do believe they're out there and uh shout out to chris ewald senior who is in the chat saying, what's up, fellas? Father of Chris Ewald Jr., who had a big bump in On3's 2025 rankings, which we didn't get to today. Uh, but since Chris Ewald Sr. is here, might as well just quickly touch on that. Thoughts on Chris Ewald Jr. getting back into the top 100, Zach? Yeah, I think we've both, we've both seen him multiple times and have been awfully impressed with 
his coverage radius and his athletic ability. So I, I was not surprised that he received such a big bump. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought Chris had a really good game when I saw him live. We both saw him throughout the offseason. I mean, just a uh, great long athletic corner with plenty of speed. I think Michigan, you know, is going to have to fight to keep him. You know, so, so there are still some other schools trying to flip him, whether it's Miami or Florida State or Auburn or Tennessee. Texas just offered a couple of days ago. Um, but overall, I mean, he's the face of Michigan's class and the Wolverines need to do everything they can to make sure he's still happy. And I believe Chris Ewald Sr. can confirm in the comments that Chris Ewald Jr. is set to come back for the game against Ohio State. Um, and then lastly, uh, I'll just wrap it up here. The underclassman I saw in game was Riley Pettijan, top 100 linebacker out of Texas. Uh, definitely reminds me of Junior Colson, six foot three, 200 pounds. Is probably off. He's closer to 215 right now. Um, just a big athletic kid that can fill gaps in a hurry, run sideline to sideline, comfortable in coverage exactly like a junior Colston. I actually think he has a little bit more versatility than junior. I think he has the length to come off the edge. I also think he can play some will, but I think he's the perfect fit to come in and fill that junior Colston role right away. I could see him starting as a true freshman at a place like Michigan. Now top 100 kid out of Texas, obviously going to be tough to pull him from the Lone Star State, especially with schools like Texas and OU and Texas A&M involved as well as some national programs like Florida and Florida State and USC. But he has visited Michigan already. He was on campus for the spring game back in April, and the Wolverines are looking to get him back on campus this fall. All right, guys, we've gone way over time, so appreciate you guys for joining me. I have to go and get some food, and uh, Zach has to go try to communicate with aliens. So we will be back next week. Of course, they're only friendly. So, you know, if Zach plays the Ouija board tonight. He'll only get friendly ghosts and aliens, I guess. They, they might join on the Ouija board one. Um, as always, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I will be back tomorrow for the Q&A show. Sorry I had to cancel last week, but I will be back tomorrow to take all your questions, Michigan recruiting related or alien related. Doesn't really matter. Join me tomorrow. <laughs>